Here's what's happening right now. It looks so nice out there. I don't even want to talk about how it feels, but we'll do that later. That's in a few minutes. Karen. Just in time for this cold snap, we've got the advice you need to stay warm with minimal clothing. No, as a matter of fact, I'm not very cold right now, <clears throat> but my vocal cords are. All right, thank you, Paula. An Uber driver is charged after allegedly stabbing a passenger he felt had disrespected him. Now we're hearing from the rideshare company. Plus, police say the story this mom gave about why she left her child inside a freezing cold car just does not add up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Monday, and it is a busy day. Time now for our first look at the forecast. It is definitely cold out there. Lots of folks uh, perhaps starting some of their traveling and some doing some shopping. They have to bundle up, Ben. They sure do, Karen. Uh, we're really bracing for our coldest night of the season so far. Temperatures right now are hanging in the teens all across the area, and the wind's not doing us any favors. Their uh, wind chills right now are at zero in a lot of locations, eight above right now in Lapeer. But once we get into tonight, we're anticipating that the winds will start dying down a bit, but temperatures are also going to crater. We will take a look at that and find out what's to come as we get towards the end of our Christmas week forecast. Plus, your four zone outlook is just around the corner. We'll look at those low temperatures tonight and a little bit of a warm up as we head towards the end of the seven day forecast. It's all ahead in just a few minutes, Karen. All right, Ben. We are following some breaking news from Germany at this hour involving a deadly crash at a public market. Steve Gargiola is in the newsroom with what we know at this hour. Steve? Well, Karen, right now there is much more confusion than information, but here's what we do know. A truck crashed into a crowded Christmas market in Germany's capital of Berlin, killing at least nine people, injuring 50 others. Police there say early indications are that this was a deliberate attack. The area is one of the Berlin's busiest shopping districts. According to witnesses there, the truck drove across the street, jumped a curb and into the marketplace, plowing into crowds of shoppers. Police have not confirmed whether this incident is related to any terrorist group. According to German media, the truck had a Polish license plate. But police have released no information about the driver, and that's what we know. Of course, we will continue to gather information for Local 4 News at 5 and any updates as soon as we get them online at clickondetroit.com. Karen, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Meantime, closer to home, we're following breaking news in the search for the missing Farmington Hills woman, Danielle Stislicki. Investigators now believe she was the victim of a crime. The 28-year-old woman hasn't been seen since December 2nd when she left her job in Southfield. There is a $125,000 reward for information leading to her safe return. An Uber driver is now charged for allegedly stabbing his passenger five times. Police say this all began about 1.30 in the morning on Saturday when a Beverly Hills man and his wife called for an Uber to pick them up from a holiday party in town Bloomfield Township. 23-year-old Jacob Alleman pulled out, but police say that's when he told the man he was disrespecting his vehicle when he tapped the window to get in. Well, the situation escalated and the man was stabbed in the back, chest and face. Alleman is now charged with assault with intent to do great bodily harm. We did just get a statement from Uber. It says, quote, what has been described is appalling. The driver has been banned from the app and we have reached out to the Bloomfield Township Police Department to offer any assistance for their investigation. An investigation is underway into the cause of a house fire in Taylor. It broke out shortly after noon today on Merrick Street. Our Sky 4 was over the scene as a massive amount of smoke and flames could be seen coming from the center of the home's roof. Firefighters were able to get it under control, but no word yet on cause or injuries. It is now formal and it is now official. Donald Trump has received Michigan's 16 electoral votes, while the electors from each of Michigan's 16 congressional districts cast their votes inside the state capitol in Lansing. Protesters voiced their opposition. The president-elect at a rally on the capitol steps. Republican Trump narrowly defeated Democrat Hillary Clinton in last month's vote. Formal electoral college votes are being cast across the country today. 
First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world. Another ceasefire and war ravaged Syria has prompted another wave of Syrian civilians evacuating battle zones. Buses carrying more than 2,000 evacuees from northern Syria have arrived in Aleppo, where they are joining more than 20,000 civilians heading to Turkey to escape the bombardment of Syria's largest city. The U.N. Security Council approved a resolution today to send 100 U.N. staff members to monitor evacuations. Syria opposes the move. The United States supports it. Of course, the Syrian government doesn't want more monitors. They don't want the crimes of their soldiers, their intelligence officials uh, to be known. They have brought to this conflict uh, a horrific sectarian agenda and that nobody, if you're doing bad things, you don't want monitors around to watch you doing them. The Syrian government says the UN monitors are actually being deployed to protect foreign spies who have been working in Aleppo. Russia's ambassador to Turkey, Andrei Karlov, was assassinated today in Ankara, Turkey's capital. Russia's foreign ministry says it happened at an art exhibition while Karlov was delivering a speech. Officials say the attack is an off-duty police officer and that he shouted, do not forget Aleppo, as he opened fire. Russian officials confirm the shooter has been neutralized, but they have not said whether or not he was arrested or killed by police. The incoming governor of North Carolina promising to repeal a controversial law that restricts transgender people from using the bathroom of their gender. Governor-elect Roy Cooper announced today he already has an agreement from leaders of the state Senate, House, and the state attorney general to repeal House Bill 2. Cooper added lawmakers would meet for a special session tomorrow to get it done. The governor-elect saying the repeal would bring jobs and events back to North Carolina. Jean Jacques Gabor, who became one of the first people who was famous for being famous, died Sunday at her Los Angeles home. The Hungarian beauty queen's film career began with Lovely to Look At back in 1952, followed that same year by perhaps her most famous film, Moulin Rouge. Gabor captured the public eye with a lavish lifestyle, a string of nine husbands. Late Sunday, her husband wrote Gabor died from a heart attack. She was 99 years old. Well, when temperatures drop this low, it is important, of course, to bundle up. But what does that really mean? Paula Tutman explores what types of fabrics are best for keeping you and your family warm and also keeping you dry. I think one of the reasons it feels so incredibly painfully cold right now is we never really got a chance to get warmed up to the idea that it was about to get cold. You remember a couple of weeks ago, we had almost near 80 degrees, and then all of a sudden, we went right into that polar plunge. It is so cold, I was not ready for it. I feel like my nostrils are freezing. And so that makes this particular cold? Painfully cold. I haven't felt my feet in the last two days, so yeah, it's been pretty cold. So it makes it perfect timing to remind everyone of the stuff we really already know, but you know, kind of forgot over the summer. So we went digging in our local four vault and found valuable information that simply doesn't change. I first learned how to make friends with the seasons a little more than a decade ago when I traveled to Churchill, Manitoba to witness the polar bear migration. It was 22 below before wind chill, 40 below with the wind. I can tell you it is painfully cold. The polar bears love this, and they are on the move. It was the first time that I learned that in Michigan, in winter, cotton is rotten. It should be a fiber you avoid like the plague, as we found out with a visit some years ago to Moose Jaw in Gross Point. The problem is it absorbs that moisture. If they get too warm and they sweat on the playground, they're going to get cold very quickly. This is where synthetic clothing shines. It doesn't absorb moisture. In fact, synthetic fabrics, blends, and wool dries 70% faster than cotton. Over the years at Local 4, we've even done scientific experiments to show you just how dangerous cotton can be. Like the time we brought in scientists from Reliable Analysis Scientific Labs of Troy, and then we dressed REI staffers in different gear. The science and the numbers simply don't change. And right now I see there is a big differential. On one half of our volunteers, we had cotton in conventional layers. On the other, technical fibers that block wind, wick away moisture, and hold heat. At 15 minutes of exposure, Danielle's conventionally layered extremities were dangerously cold with an almost 10 degree spread. Of course, technical clothing can get kind of pricey, but believe it or not, now's the time that last year's models 
They still work just as well. They are on sale right now. You can also go to discount stores. Make sure you look at the labeling to make sure it's real technical clothing. Real technical clothing will actually tell you what it does. And of course, don't forget the furry hat. Now my mom is happy about this story. Paula Tupman, Local 4. Oh, all moms are always so happy when we wear those big warm hats. Thank you, Paula. Well, a new study has some male doctors feeling a bit defensive today. Find out what they are apparently not as good as their female counterparts. We'll be talking about that. Plus, this woman's two-year-old is found in a car in sub-zero temperatures. The reason she told cops she had to leave them there for seven hours. And vegetables of all colors are good for you. But find out why you may want to trend toward one color in particular as you get older. Meantime, we are continuing to follow the breaking news out of Berlin, Germany. At this hour, nine people killed, another 50 hurt after a truck drove into a crowd at an outdoor Christmas market. The driver is in custody. Right now, investigators believe this was a deliberate act. As soon as more information comes into our newsroom, we'll pass it along to you. When I use, uh... Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Well, these two certainly look the part, don't they? This is Nate, he's 11. This is Andrew, he's 10. And they own their own company, but it's not for profit, it's to help other kids. They did that today, their story coming up. In good health, we often hear about fish as brain food, but new research finds some other foods may qualify as well. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain. Well, Karen, a new study in older adults actually suggests a pigment in certain vegetables helps preserve our cognitive ability as we age. Now, the pigment is called lutein, and it's found in leafy green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and egg yolks. Studies actually find lutein accumulates in the brain, embedding in cell membranes, where it appears to play a very protective role. I like the fact that it accumulates, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, exactly. Right. A new study getting a lot of people talking today. An interesting fact about the difference between male and female doctors right. with one particular. Yeah, well, you What's can't that? believe everything you read, right? So, <laughs> no, just kidding. So here it is, hot off the presses. Basically, researchers followed more than one million elderly patients that were hospitalized with various medical conditions. Turns out those treated by female physicians were actually 4% less likely to die and 5% less likely to be readmitted to the hospital within 30 days. Now, the difference between male and female doctors was actually greatest for patients with overwhelming infections and for pneumonia. And the reasons were not really completely clear, but we do know from previous studies, female physicians actually tend to follow guidelines, published guidelines better, and of course they also have a better relationship in general compared to men with their patients, and so maybe that accounts for some of the difference. A little bit more communication. Right, kind of but keep in mind this was based on Medicare data in elderly patients. This was not across the board. Right. Just sort of throw that out there as a defense for my male colleagues. Exactly, and they didn't talk to Dr. McGeorge. So <laughs> ah, thank you. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> All right, time to talk about our weather. And uh, you did mention the word warm up earlier today. And you know what? Even if it's a couple degrees, then I like it. Uh, the warm up is really coming late. Oh. Uh, we've got to get through tonight first. It's uh, pretty cold. Yeah, that, this is going to be the, uh, the story. Uh, let's take a look at where we're going this evening as those numbers fall down to the single digits across the area. We're going from 13 here at 6 p.m. down to 2 at midnight. And this is likely going to be very close to our overnight low. We will see those numbers come up slightly, but only to about 5 or 6 by the time we get to daybreak. So bitterly cold out there. Wind chills will be in negative territory tonight. And if those numbers materialize, like we think they will, uh, that is going to be the coldest night of the season so far. We're at 14 right now. We've got a wind chill of zero, and that's with a south-southwest wind at 11 miles an hour. Uh, winds are still going to be at about 5 to 10 overnight, and especially with temperatures that low, uh, that will allow those wind chills to stick around for tonight. So here's what we've got on the satellite right now, which is not a whole lot. We've seen a ton of sunshine today. It just <laughs> really didn't help us out all that much. There's some little snow bands that are coming off the lake out there towards Grand Rapids, and that's it. But we do not have much precipitation precipitation in the forecast going forward. In fact, really the only thing we're going to notice tomorrow is an increase in clouds and that's going to be around midday. So we'll get through tonight with mostly clear skies. Tomorrow when we get towards about uh, midday, we'll see those clouds increase. It'll be relatively high clouds. Once that trough pushes through, sunshine comes back in the afternoon and we will stay clear as uh, we get into Tuesday night. So again, another cold one on tap, just not quite as cold 
as what we're expecting for lows tonight. So here's your four zone forecast as we look at those numbers that we're going to be seeing for lows. And remember, this is not going to be a daybreak. We should be just slightly milder than this when we wake up tomorrow morning. Two in Romulus, three in the city of Detroit, one in Flat Rock, Clinton Township, and also in West Bloomfield. And those may end up being some of our warmest low temperatures. Negative lows out in Lenaway County from one and two below. Big goose eggs there in Lambertville and Dundee. Getting into the west zone, low temperatures tomorrow morning. I should say uh, yeah, tomorrow morning, about uh, two below there in Brighton, three below in Howell. And in our north zone, we're looking at numbers that are very similar between zero and two below uh, for those lows later on tonight, early tomorrow morning. So mostly clear skies. Otherwise, we will see that south wind at five to 10 miles an hour. High temperatures will recover to 28, which is better than what we did today. And we will see a warm up in that seven day forecast, but we really got to get towards Christmas Day before that happens. 40 degrees is what we're expecting there on Sunday, and that's probably going to be rain and not snow. But we do have a lot of sunshine here in the uh, office and maybe a couple flakes there as we get into Wednesday night and Thursday. Otherwise, uh, those 40s going to start us out early next week. Karen. The Red Cross says it needs blood donations, and the need is so great right now. They're actually offering more than just a cookie and juice for those who come in to donate. Find out what you could walk away with over the next few weeks. Up next, how Rogue One fared in its first weekend at the box office compared to last year's Star Wars blockbuster. Plus, which gender and age group was most likely to go? From the Time now for a look at our top trending stories on our Monday afternoon. And this is one that a lot of folks are talking about. Rogue One Star Wars Story landed number one at the box office this weekend. The movie brought in $290 million worldwide and had an impressive opening here in the U.S., bringing in $155 million. About 100 million shy of Star Wars The Force Awakens, which sent fans into a frenzy this time last year, if you remember. Of the viewing crowd, 59% were men. 41% women. A little more than half of the viewers are between the ages of 26 and 34. Pretty strong female audience on that one. Okay, Colorado mom is behind bars right now after leaving her young son in a car during sub-zero temperatures. Police say 26-year-old Nicole Carmen left her two-year-old son alone in a car for seven hours. Carmen claims she had gotten into an accident with her son the night before and went to get help. But police say that's not the case. They say she had been arrested three times for driving under the influence, including once last month. And get this, the boy actually suffered hypothermia and frostbite, and he remains in the hospital this afternoon. Well, if you are headed to the post office today, oh, you are not alone. So many people are there, and there are some long lines. The U.S. Postal Service says today is the busiest mailing day. Postal workers are expecting more than 600 million cards, letters, and packages to be processed. Folks are getting those gifts in the mail as tomorrow is the last day to ship items using first-class mail and have them arrive by Christmas. This story is also very popular this afternoon. American Red Cross is once again urging eligible donors to come out and give blood to ensure the constant need for it this winter. But this year, a special gift for giving donors of all blood types are needed. So as a special thank you for taking the time to donate, those who do come out to give now through January 8th will receive a long-sleeved Red Cross t-shirt, of course, while supplies last. Ahead, first at floor four, Michigan State Police celebrating their 100th birthday by going old school. See the new but very traditional gear they will be wearing in the field. That's coming up next. Wrap up the deal. Finally, first at four, hats off to the Michigan State Police for its 100th anniversary. Or more precisely, we might say hats on as the state is changing its trooper hat style. It's called the campaign hat, which was worn by original Michigan State Police officers until the early 1920s. It's black straw with clear coat protection with a four dent style. That is old school. Those with the rank of trooper will wear hats with a black braid. Sergeants will have a silver braid and lieutenants will have a gold braid. I always think it's fun to go old school. What do they wear now? It's not that. It's a little bit more updated. Okay. A little bit more blue now, the black. But Take your word for it. Thanks so much for joining us. First at four, we are back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next.